In this video, I'm gonna to explain to you exactly where option prices come from in an intuitive manner so you can develop a deeper understanding of these extremely confusing financial instruments. Coming right up. When first starting out trading options, it can be very confusing to look at all of the different option prices in an option chain and wonder if there's any rhyme or reason to those specific prices. Is it random or is there some logic behind each option's price? As it turns out, each option's price does make sense when you understand a few key things about that stock, the option that you're looking at, and the amount of time until that option has until it expires. Now the first place we have to start when talking about option prices is intrinsic and extrinsic value, which are the two price components that every single option contract has. Intrinsic value is the option's real value or the benefit of using that option to convert it into shares of stock as opposed to simply trading the shares at the current market price. Call options have the ability to purchase shares of stock at the call's strike price, while put options have the ability to sell shares of stock at the put's strike price. If we're looking at a call option with a strike price of $110 and that particular stock is trading for $120, that 110 call option has $10 of intrinsic value because that 110 call option can purchase shares of stock at $110 and since the stock price is at $120, that call option has $10 of value because it can purchase shares of stock $10 below the current market price of the shares. Now on that same $120 stock, if we look at a put option with a strike price of $130, that 130 put option also has $10 of intrinsic value because remember, a put option has the ability to sell shares of stock at the put's strike price, and if the put strike price is $130, but the stock price is at $120, that put option has the ability to sell shares of stock $10 above the current stock price, which means that put option has $10 of intrinsic value. So if you're into formulas, the formulas for calculating call option and put option intrinsic value are very easy. So for call options, the intrinsic value will be equal to the current stock price less the call's strike price. So if we have a stock price of $155, and the call option strike price is $100, 155 minus 100 gives us $55 of intrinsic value. On the other hand, put options have intrinsic value that's equal to the puts strike price minus the current stock price. So if we have a stock price of $100 and we're looking at a put option with a strike price of $115, the strike price of $115 less the $100 stock price gives us $15 of intrinsic value. Now intrinsic value is the easy part of an options price because intrinsic value is the same across every option in the options trading universe, meaning that the formulas that I just shared with you will apply to every option on every stock that you look at. For instance, if you look at an option on Apple or an option on Netflix, the intrinsic value formulas that I've just shared with you will apply to both of those stocks. However, the second price component, which is extrinsic value, that's where things get a little more tricky and that's where we're gonna spend the most of our discussion in this video. So extrinsic value is the portion of an options price that exceeds its intrinsic value. So for example, if we see a call option has $10 of intrinsic value, but the call option is actually trading for $17, that additional $7 that the call option has is considered extrinsic value. So what is extrinsic value? Well, extrinsic value can be interpreted as the option's potential to become more valuable before it expires. So whenever you look at an option, that option has a set expiration date in the future, and there's the potential for that option to become more valuable than it is right now through stock price movements before that option expires. And extrinsic value in an option contract is associated with that option's potential to become more valuable, especially intrinsically valuable, before it reaches its expiration date. Now extrinsic value is trickier than intrinsic value because extrinsic value varies depending on specific factors related to the option you're looking at, the amount of time it has till expiration, and the particular stock whose options we're currently analyzing. So as I mentioned, extrinsic value can be thought of as the potential for that option to become more valuable in the future. So to demonstrate intrinsic and extrinsic value to you, let's go ahead and look at some real options 
examples and visualize intrinsic and extrinsic value over time as the stock price changes. So in this first example, we're gonna look at a call option with a strike price of $105, and the option has 73 days to expiration at the beginning of the period. Now at the beginning of the period, we can see that the 105 call option had no intrinsic value because the stock price was trading just below $105. However, even though the option did not have any intrinsic value at the beginning of the period, the option was worth over $5 because with 73 days to expiration and the stock price really close to this call strike price, there's still 73 days left for the stock price to potentially increase, in which case that 105 call option would become more and more valuable as the stock price increased. Unfortunately, as the share price decreased towards $95, the call options value decreased because not only did the stock price decrease, but time passed as well. Now, when we're talking about call options, if a stock price decreases and time passes, that means that it becomes less and less likely for that call option to be valuable at expiration since that option is now closer to its expiration date. And in this example, the stock price is now further away from that call strike price. And both of those things lead to a lower probability of that option being valuable at expiration, which explains why we saw a decrease in the options value as the share price went from $105 to $95. Now at around 47 days to expiration, the stock price had shot up to $115. And with that call strike price being $105, that call option at that moment had $10 of intrinsic value. But as we can see, the call options overall value was $12 which means that call option had $2 of extrinsic value remaining because even with the stock price $10 above the strike price, there was still 47 days until expiration. And that means that there's still 47 days left for the stock price to continue increasing, in which case that option would continue increasing in value as well. So hopefully that example cleared some things up for you and made this concept a little easier to understand. Let's go ahead and look at one more example. And this time we're gonna look at a put option. In this next example, we're gonna be looking at a put option with a strike price of $80. And this particular put option had 73 days until expiration at the beginning of the period. Now, interestingly, at the beginning of the period, the stock price was at $110, which is significantly above the put strike price of $80. Now, since we know that put options have intrinsic value when the stock price is below the put strike price, in this particular example, this put option did not have any intrinsic value at the time of entry. And that means that any option value that this put option had was 100% extrinsic. At the beginning of the period, we can see that this put option was worth $2. And since this put option had no intrinsic value, that $2 of value was purely extrinsic. Now, as we can see in this example, the stock price did fall significantly in the coming weeks. And with around 40 days to expiration, the stock price was at $82, which was just $2 above the puts strike price of $80. Now due to the significant stock price decrease, we can see that the put options value went from $2 at the beginning of the period to $6 when the stock price reached $82. And that can be explained by the fact that with 40 days to expiration, and the stock price now much closer to the put strike price, there's a much higher likelihood that the put option is valuable at expiration because the stock price is now much closer to the put strike price. And with 40 days to expiration, it's possible that the stock price continues decreasing, in which case that put option would become intrinsically valuable and potentially much more valuable than it is right now. Unfortunately, the stock price did rebound and as the stock price increased and the put option got closer and closer to expiration, it became less and less likely for that put option to be valuable at expiration because its window to become valuable is shrinking and the stock price was moving in the opposite direction for that put option to become valuable. Both of those things explain why the put options value decreased dramatically in the weeks after that stock price rebound from $82. I hope you found those visual examples to be helpful in understanding intrinsic and extrinsic value as they relate to call options and put options. Up next, we're gonna talk about the key factors that go into determining how much extrinsic value a stock's options have. So there are two key factors that go into determining how much extrinsic value a stock's options have. The first key factor that goes into determining whether a stock's options have lots of extrinsic value or little extrinsic value is whether or not that stock is highly volatile. If a stock is highly volatile, then that means the stock price fluctuates a lot on a daily or weekly or monthly basis. And because of that, the options on that stock will have lots of extrinsic value 
because there's a higher likelihood that these options could become significantly more valuable before they expire as compared to options on a much calmer stock such as options on Coca-Cola or Walmart. So in other words, a higher probability of the options becoming substantially more valuable before expiration means that those options will trade with more extrinsic value compared to options that do not have as high of a probability of becoming significantly more valuable, which is the case when you're looking at options on a low volatility stock. The second key factor when analyzing extrinsic value is how much time an option has until expiration. Now getting back to probabilities, options with very little time until expiration are going to trade with less extrinsic intrinsic value than options that have lots of time until expiration because options with lots of time until expiration have lots of time left for the stock price to move, in which case they could become significantly more valuable before they expire. On the other hand, options with very little time until expiration will trade with less extrinsic value because since there's not as much time left for that stock price to move, there's not as much time for those options to take on significantly more valuable. And that is exactly why options with less time until expiration trade with less extrinsic value compared to options with more time until expiration. Now for this reason, extrinsic value is sometimes referred to as time value. For instance, if we look at a call option with a strike price of 100 and the stock price is at $105 and this particular call option expires in one hour, that option is going to be trading very close to $5, which is its intrinsic value, because with one hour left until expiration, it's very likely that the stock price is going to be somewhere close to where it is right now, in which case there's a very high likelihood that that 100 call options value is somewhere close to where it is right now. So with very little time until expiration, an option will trade with very little extrinsic value because with such little time until expiration, that option's final value is fairly certain. Now, of course, the stock price is gonna change around and the option's value will change according to its intrinsic value. But in general, options with very little time until expiration do not trade with very much extrinsic value because their final valuations are very close to being known. All right, so to finish up this video, I wanna talk about a few options pricing laws that will always be true no matter what. Now the first options pricing law that will always be true is that options will always be worth at least the amount of their intrinsic value. Now that means a call option will always be worth at least the difference between the stock price and the call strike price. And for put options, that means the put option will always be worth at least the difference between the strike price and the stock price. So let's hop over to the Tastyworks trading platform so I can prove that concept to you right now. Now, if you're not aware of this already, if you open and fund your first Tastyworks account using the project option referral code, we'll give you full access to one of our paid courses completely free. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and check the link down in the description. So I've just opened up the Tastyworks trading platform and for this intrinsic value example, I'm going to look at Apple options. And the reason I'm choosing Apple is because the stock price just closed at $200.10 which is going to make all of these intrinsic value calculations relatively easy. So to demonstrate this concept, I'm gonna open up the May 2019 options with 39 days to expiration. And let's go ahead and look at some option prices. So if you recall, a call options intrinsic value is equal to the stock price minus the call option strike price. So for example, if we look at this 190 call option with Apple at $200.10, this 190 call has just about $10 of intrinsic value. And as we can see, the option is trading for more than that at around $13.50. Now, if we go down to the 170 call option with Apple at $200.10, this 170 call option has right around $30 of intrinsic value. And as we can see here, this option is trading just over $30. Now on the put side of things, if you recall, a put option has intrinsic value that is equal to the strike price of the put option minus the stock price. So if we look at the 220 put option with Apple at $200.10, this 220 put option has $20 of intrinsic value or just about that. And as we can see here, the put option with a strike price of $220 is trading just over $20. Now, if we look at the 225 put option, this put option has right around $25 of intrinsic value, 
And as we can see, this put option is trading just over $25. The next option pricing law is that call options at lower strike prices will always be more valuable than call options at higher strike prices. And on the put side of things, put options at higher strike prices will always be worth more than put options at lower strike prices. Now, the reason for that is that call options at lower strike prices will have more intrinsic value than call options at higher strike prices. But in the case of options that do not have any intrinsic value, a a call option with a lower strike price has a higher likelihood of being intrinsically valuable at expiration because there's a higher likelihood of a smaller stock price increase compared to a larger stock price increase. Now in the case of put options, put options at higher strike prices will have more intrinsic value than put options at lower strike prices. Now in the case of put options with no intrinsic value, a higher strike price means that the put option has a much higher likelihood of being valuable at expiration because small stock price decreases are much more likely than significant stock price decreases. Let's hop over to the Tastyworks trading platform yet again, and I can show that concept to you using real option prices. So the next options trading law that I mentioned is that call options at lower strike prices are always more valuable than call options at higher strike prices, and put options at higher strike prices are always more valuable than put options at lower strike prices. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the June 2019 options for Apple and these options have 74 days until expiration. So since we've already covered the intrinsic value portion of this, we know that options are gonna be worth their intrinsic value or more. So for this example, we're just gonna focus on the options that do not have intrinsic value. That's going to be call options with strike prices above $200 and put options with strike prices below $200, in this case, since Apple is right around $200. So if we look at the 205 call option, we can see that this option is trading right around $6.40. And if we look at the 215 call option, we can see that this option is trading for right around $3.15, which is less valuable than the 205 call option. And the reason for that is that there's a higher likelihood that in 74 days, Apple is above $205 as compared to $215. So since there's a lower probability that Apple will be above $215 as compared to $205, this 205 call option has more value in it because it is more likely to be valuable at expiration compared to this 215 call option because for this 215 call option to be valuable in 74 days, Apple needs to increase more than $15, but for the 205 call option to be, to be valuable in 74 days, Apple only has to increase $5 or more. So the probability associated with an option expiring with value is directly tied to that option's value at any given moment. So if we go ahead and look at the 240 call option, we can see that this 240 call option is not very valuable whatsoever, even though it has 74 days to expiration, and that's because the market is telling us that there's a very low probability that Apple increases to $240 or more before these options expire, which is exactly why call options at higher strike prices are less valuable than call options at lower strike prices. On the other hand, if we look at the put options, the opposite is true. So if we look at the 190 put option, this put option currently has no intrinsic value because the strike price is below the stock price of $200. And if we look at the 190 put, we can see that this call or this put option is trading right around $4.58. And if we look at the 175 put option, the 175 put is trading right around, let's just call it $1.60. So the reason this 190 put is more valuable than the 175 put is that there's a much higher likelihood that Apple drops below 190 before it expires, before these options expire, as compared to falling below 175 before these options expire. So as I said from before, the probability associated with an option expiring in the money is directly tied to that option's value at any given moment. And that explains exactly why if we look to the 150 put option with 74 days to expiration, this 150 put option is not very valuable at all because there's a very low probability 
that Apple will fall $50 or more, in which case this 150 put would be valuable at expiration if that were to happen. So in short, call options at higher strike prices are less valuable than call options at lower strike prices. And in the case of call options with no intrinsic value, that's because a call option with a lower strike price has a higher probability of becoming valuable before expiration as compared to call options at higher strike prices and the opposite is true for put options. The last options pricing law I wanna talk about is the fact that options with more time until expiration will have more extrinsic value compared to options with less time until expiration. And that's because there's a higher likelihood of significant stock price movements over longer periods of time compared to shorter periods of time. One last time, let's hop over to the Tasteworks trading platform and look at some real option prices so I can validate this concept for you. So the last options trading law I just mentioned is that options with more time until expiration have more value than the same option with less time to expiration. So basically what that means is if we look at the same option type and strike price on the same stock, if we compare two different exp expiration cycles, the option with more time until expiration will be worth more than the option with less time until expiration. So to demonstrate that to you, let's open up the June 2019 options in Apple and these options have 74 days until expiration. So for this example, let's look at the 215 call option, which is currently being valued right around $3.15. Now, since Apple is at $200.10, this 215 call option is completely extrinsic, which means all of this value is essentially the value being associated with the fact that this 215 call option could be valuable before it expires in 74 days, since there are 74 days for Apple to increase to a price greater than $215, in which case this 215 call option would expire with value. So now let's look at the same 215 call option, but in a longer dated expiration cycle. So for this example, let's go to January 2020. And if we look at the 215 call option in January 2020, these options have 284 days to expiration. And as we can see here, if we look at the 215 call option, this 215 call option is trading about $10.75. So this 215 call option with 284 days is actually over three times more valuable than this 215 call option with 74 days to expiration. And that's simply because there's a higher likelihood that Apple is above $215 over a 284 day period as compared to that same stock price increase over a 74 day period which explains why longer dated options have more extrinsic value because longer dated options have more time to become intrinsically valuable because there's simply more time for the stock price to move in the favor of that option. That's gonna do it for this video, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you giving me a few minutes of your day and hopefully it was worthwhile for you because hopefully by now you are much more comfortable with where option prices come from and understand them on a deeper level. I'm Chris from projectoption.com and I will see you in the next video.